Hi guys, so here we're going to talk about something called Gibbs Free Energy, and we're in Section 3 of Unit 5. So you'll need your notes. Here we talk about spontaneous reactions. We call them thermodynamically favored, um, because that what helps, that's what helps drive a reaction. So um, we say that a thermodynamically favored reaction will have these three criteria, essentially. It will be exothermic, so energy is being released. It will have low enthalpy, so it will have a negative delta H, and it will have a high entropy, um, or positive delta S. We want um, the something called the Gibbs free energy, which is delta G. So this is the amount of energy um, able or available in the reaction. We want that value to be negative. So if it's negative, that means that this is going to be a thermodynamically favored reaction, meaning that it's going to be spontaneous. So this is the basic um, equation for it. Delta G is equal to negative, or excuse me, it's equal to delta H minus T delta S. The delta G is your Gibbs free energy. Your delta H is um, what we've been dealing with. This is your products minus the reactants. It's your enthalpy um, minus T. T is your temperature in Kelvin, and delta S is going to be your entropy. So on your paper for your notes, I expect you to have written down what G means, what H is, what T is, and what S is. Right? So when we have, um, we're going to kind of evaluate really what happens with each of these numbers. Um, we'll be able to plug these in later on. So if we have a negative delta H and a positive delta S, our delta G value will end up being negative. So you can plug in some values for yourself if you want to test this. So for example, if you had a negative 1 for delta H and a positive 1 for delta S, no matter what temperature it is, your delta G will be negative. All right, so this can be like 298K. Um, and I use 298K because that's standard temperature. Your delta G will be negative. This will be favored. It will be a spontaneous reaction. On the other hand, if you're, you have a positive delta H and a negative delta S, your delta G ends up being positive. This will not be thermodynamically favored. This reaction probably won't occur unless you actually have more energy input into it, like, like an electrical energy source into it. So again, if your delta H is positive, your delta S is negative, it's going to be positive delta G. So if you have positive enthalpy, it's endothermic, it's taking in energy, and it's low entropy, um, meaning that there's a lot of order in it, this reaction is not going to occur. What happens when both? the heat of reaction, your enthalpy, and your entropy are negative. So if you put in negative values for delta H and delta S, again, pick random values, it will be negative if your delta H is greater than whatever your product is of your T times your delta S. Um, so it just depends on the numbers. So for example, if you had, uh, let's see, negative 100 here for delta T, as long as it's greater than whatever that T delta S is, um, this reaction will still occur. It will have a negative Gibbs free energy. And what happens when both are positive? Well, it will be positive if delta H is less than T delta S. And we'll go through and kind of figure out some of these reactions together. So to summarize, Gibbs free energy, or G, is the amount of energy available in the reaction. Um, it takes into account enthalpy and entropy. So enthalpy is your delta H, entropy is your delta S. Um, plug in values into the equation just to see whether or not um, it will occur, so whether or not the, re the reaction will occur spontaneously, or if it needs an output of energy or input of energy, excuse me, like a battery. Um, you want delta G to be negative. That's the big deal here, too. All right, have a good day.